Hi, I'm Steve Nathans Kelly, editor of Streaming Media Producer. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Kevin Garcia of Mix One Sound. Uh, Kevin and I spoke about a year and a half ago at the beginning of the pandemic and also the beginning of Mix One Sound. Uh, for years, Kevin and his partners had been out on tour with bands, doing festivals, uh, producing video in live venues with live bands. Um, when that industry basically ceased to be at the time of the pandemic starting, uh, they they built a soundstage in their storage space using the gear that they had come off the road with, uh, basically to create kind of a state-of-the-art environment for capturing live performances and streaming them out to uh, online audiences. As things have opened up a little bit more in the last year or so, they've been back out on the road and uh, producing shows with live bands. And what they really have been doing more and more is uh, hybrid events where there's an, where there's an in-person audience and then an online audience, and they're delivering a stream to the online audience, uh, often with uh, shots and kind of a, a whole experience that you don't really get in the venue. Um, we'll talk about that and uh, other things in our interview. Here's uh, Kevin Garcia of Mix One Sound. When we did this before, you were just getting started with Mix One Sound. You know, and you yeah. just, you've done that that show in the band's living room, you know, and you you got a stream online. And, and so, you know, you were ready to go, but you were also just sort of trying to reconnect with your contacts in the industry and say, this is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, so can you kind of give me the 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 highlights of, of sort of where you've been in, the, you know, what you've done in the last year and a half with, you know, just catch me up on this one. Yeah, second. I guess since then i've been working with rock nation a bunch and just like moment house and veeps and a bunch of other big platforms and just doing streams pre-tapes live i've been doing live events as of recently with like the slight opening we've been going through like all the danny wimmer shows doing video for all those again and just been doing that like as far as streams go the earlier part of 2020 we did black bear and then we did khalid brockhampton jimmy Eat world dance gavin dance corn um and then this year I mean, I just did Pentatonics on Saturday. And then before that was Tinashe. And then, I don't even know, it's just like, it's just like this long list I have to like look at. <laughs> I don't just look at my video and I'm like, oh yeah, I did that too. Oh, I did that too. So have, have these been a combination of some are stream only events and some are hybrid where they're, you know, the in-person yeah, audience? Like Pentatonics, for example, was at the KFC Yum Center um, in Louisville and it was 8,000 people sold out. And we built, we brought a camera team in on top of that. So, you know, we filmed that show essentially like almost like you film like an award show is how it felt, you know, to like the viewer at home, you know, minus the fact that it's an hour and a half versus one song. So, it's, you know, the whole show. And then like Tanache, we did her as a virtual tour stop. So hers was in like a, a place with no crowd. So it's really just been a mix of, you know, everything. It's kind of like, it's just, it's become another revenue stream for these artists or another way to like express art essentially. So they're just doing that on top of that. Like a lot, like some other bands I've talked to, they're like, oh, we're planning an album release for next year. And we're going to do a stream on top of the tour as like another thing they can offer now. You were primarily doing festivals before COVID. Festivals right? and tour. Yeah. Tour. I was touring with a couple of bands and doing festivals and just like live events and like, you know, little corporate things here and there just, you know, but basically it was me and a camera or me and a friend with the camera. Now it's like a team of, you know, like pentatonics. I flew out six guys and hired six more on site. So we had 13 people, like it's a whole crew now. And so, and you're, you're doing, are you doing what you did before where you were doing like the IMAG part and then you were doing something for delivery later and now you're adding the streaming on top of that? Um, I'm doing IMAG here and there. It kind of comes, it, it very, it definitely varies. IMAG's definitely come, become more of a back burner and it's more of the live, of like the live event or the streaming or the, you know, digital experience, whatever, you know, whatever they want to call them now. It's more of that. Because, you know, I mean, again, half the events are still not really happening. You know, it's like it's still half open, half closed, half open, half closed. So I make isn't really a big focus right now, especially with limited crowds at like most of the places except for Florida. And so when you're when you're doing the live streams for a, a hybrid event, um, you know, is your focus on, you know, kind of capturing the excitement of the band and the, the feeling of the show and just, you know, the way that you would shoot a band? Or are you, you know, focusing more now on delivering something that, you know, creates more of a lean forward 
interactive experience for for the remote mm. online audience. Obviously, there's nothing that can beat being in the room. There's no way around that. Like even like this interview, if you and I were in a room together, it would always be better than doing this. So just no way around that human energy. So I'm trying to get things that you normally wouldn't get, whether it's closer angles. Like I'm not really focusing on giant crowd shots like you normally would because they don't want to see a crowd that they're not in. They want to see the artists that they can't see and they want to see the artists closer than they could see in the front row. And that's what we're trying to do with, you know, whether it's interesting angles or something behind the stage, you know, those little things, those little sprinkles of things that will make it feel more intimate or bigger or worth paying, you know, 10, 20, 30 bucks for. Like we just did, um, our, I just did RL Grime, uh, the EDM artist. We just did him and it was his Halloween event. I directed the live stream, which is live, live at the same time as the sold out event at the Palladium in LA. And, you know, we like took, we actually took his, <clears throat> his uh, LED wall feed and ran it in as a seventh input as like a camera essentially just to, for the home viewer because they could put it on their big screen and feel like they're at the event still. His show, for example, is really driven by the narrative of his animations. So that was a big thing for them. Well, that was like the story. That was more important than him sitting there pushing, you know, like playing and mixing and whatnot. The animations were the real like magic of that show was. So that way the home viewer wouldn't get like, oh, look, it's a little guy and then a giant screen. Like, no, like here's the screen as well as the you know viewers there so the bigger your screen the more fun it is at home i was reading about uh martin scorsese when he was making the last waltz you know and he <laughs> he said i don't want to make woodstock again right woodstock was huge but it was like half of it at least was about the audience and half yeah. or less was about the bands and he said i'm never going to show the audience i'm going to show like what the bands look like to each other on stage you know and kind actually of get yeah we just did that with Foss, like um you know foster the people they just did their anniversary show um, of their big their big record, and we did the same thing. They had three nights at the Wiltern in LA, and we came in for the third night. The you know three nights in a row, same you know similar show, you know like they play a couple hits, play the album, play a couple hits. So we came in for the last one just to do a, a you know true live stream of that live audio, live video, like in real time of everything. And like we had angles that a viewer would never have seen, like. You know, I have one shot. Um, I had a porta jib side stage, for example, like of the keyboard player, and the shot was literally just if imagine like a, almost a macro on your hands on a keyboard. It was like that close. And him was like, you know, stuff that you'd never see from the audience point of view. And then I still use a couple wides of just like, you know, the big moments and they reveal stuff. But overall, it was like showing a better view than anyone there could get. In terms of you know when you're actually working with the bands, I mean, you know, so this kind of goes to what I was thinking about yesterday i was editing this video yesterday with this guy who's been doing hybrid events of various kinds for like 10 years now and mm -hmm. he said the fundamental problem with hybrid events is it like it goes against 200,000 years of human evolution where whoever is on stage if there's any audience in front of them they're playing for the audience they can see not the audience that's online somewhere yeah so how do you how do you compensate for that um, I just, I just really trying to make it interesting. Like, you know, like that side angle being a good example of foster, like, and you know, the nice thing, at least we'll use them as an example, example, cause that was one of the most recent ones he played to camera and the audience, like he, cause he knew it, like, it just one of those things, like it's just that conversation, like, Hey, this is obviously there is people in the room that comes as a, pri a huge priority, but it's not hard to throw the camera a little bit of love here and there too. Just like you would on tour. Like if I was like doing event, like back in the day, I used to like just the event highlights, there'll still be a moment where they like come to me just so that I can get that little image. So it's like, just remembering, okay, if I play here a little bit, you know, you just gotta play there 20% of the time and those magic moments hold over for so long on, on film. Well, tell me a little bit about the partnership with Moment House and sort of who does what and, and how. Um, so yeah, if, if, there's a VI, if there's a VIP thing, Moment House normally handles that. They're the, the ticketer the, and the streamer and the server. So like, you know, if there's 20,000 people watching their servers handle it, you know, it's like all, they handle all that aspect where I basically upload a file to them, you know, like right now I'm working on Pentatonix when that's done, that'll get uploaded to their production manager, um, Garrett, and then he'll distribute it to, you know, whoever's running the stream itself. Well, like how big an audience are you, are you streaming to, you know, and, and how does that affect kind of what you're, what you're doing? Um, I mean, I guess, I guess the audience varies per, you know, like if it's free on YouTube, it's always bigger because free is big. Thousands or tens of thousands who will buy these tickets and then that's really the, the weight gets lit, held, held on the moment house side. So that's what their servers come into play just by having good servers. I'm not, I think they use um, Amazon servers, if I remember correctly. In terms of the gear you're using, you know, I, I think last year 
you know, we talked, you had the Ursus and then you were saying, I really want to get the, you know, the pocket cinema camera, but so, I mean, what are you using now and how do you use the different you know, cameras? Um, so yeah, we've, I've upgraded a bit. I'm using the, my primary two cameras now are the Blackmagic Ursa 12K and the Ursa Broadcast G2, the one that just came out like last week. <clears throat> I used a hybrid of those two as my, my, a, my A cameras on Pentatonix. And then I had a couple pockets like placed throughout the building. Like I'll use the pockets almost like in a way you'd use like a GoPro, like kind of like try to hide it. Cause you know, they're not, they're not much bigger than a phone as far as like, I mean, they're much deeper, but as far as a footprint goes, you can hide them a bit. So like on Pentatonix, we had 10 cameras. It was uh, six Ursa, six Ursa bodies and four pocket bodies, three 12K or four 12Ks and two of the broadcast G2s, which the G2s were super helpful because I put them in like this areas where the light was a little more volatile and they have a lot better low light. So they can kind of like make, I can shade them up or crank them up and down in real time really quickly to compensate just for like, you know, lighting being all over the place. And then the 12Ks just look really, really nice. I don't film often in 12K for these because most of the streams get delivered in 1080, but the sensor just looks better. And it's just been sharper filming at 4K or 8K. And then, you know, using, using that to like, oh, I have now, I have two angles out of one. I can kind of cheat some stuff and it makes, you know, my editor, it's a, it's a love hate thing. Cause like, oh, the files are giant, which is, you know, always a little challenging, but like now he has two shots out of one shot and we just got, you know, instead of 10 cameras we might have like what to the viewer looks like 15. And so you're, you're using black magic up and down. I mean, you're using the cameras. You could, the, the, I, you know, the pretty much. The yeah. I, I would say it's pretty, there's very little not black magic in my arsenal. Like if they make a product that does my need, I have, you know, I have like 15 black magic cameras. I mean, like when I'm streaming, I even, I use these little things like the little ultra recorders, like they're great just to pipe in their video assist is what I use to capture my program out onto yeah, SSD. Yeah, they're great. The new 12G ones, are, they're awesome. I have a few of those. I have a few switchers. I have a few panels. I have, I don't even, I mean, I'm, basically if they make it, I have something. Like I've gotten all the, fi all the fiber things now, the little um, mini fiber to SDI because I've been converting to fiber just because it's faster and more reliable. So I, you know, shoot, got like 18 of those converters the other day. Like, in, you know, pentatonics, like, oh, it's a 400 foot run to wherever. Cool. I'm not not going to even try to make SDI and, you know, bridge it, like just fiber it out and just spool it and be done. So yeah, it's, it's, I, I pretty much really try to stick exclusively with them because all their stuff works so well together, just like adding another piece in. It's not like, oh, well, this has to now convert to this. Like, no, it's just one, you know, like one big workflow that all talks. Are you still dealing with, you know, social distancing restrictions? So does that limit how many, how much crew you can have on site? Sure. It's the only limitation really is just um, vaccinations. That's the only thing. Like as long as everyone's vaccinated, it's pretty, pretty fair play. Like in like a lot of these situations, like that building, there's 8,000 people already. So me adding 13 is not a big deal. Um, you know, we've had shoots. I did one for Poppy. Um, this was during kind of the height of the pandemic during the Grammys in January. I did a Grammys performance for Poppy and we had, we did it center staging out in LA and we were Burbank and we can only have like, 25 people in the room at one time so we'd have to like stagger like okay ac's going and build the cameras operators are outside okay now we swap okay we're going for a take the band is coming in so everyone get out except for like you know my credit go down to like five for takes but i had a crew of 12 there or so waiting outside like i had like half my crew outside waiting so i had to like deal with those challenges but that's starting to taper off as you know we're on the the hopeful back end of this thing, depending on what happens in the next like two weeks, I imagine. Yeah. But as of this moment, it's tapered, it's tapered off quite a bit where, you know, basically it's like, Hey, if you're vaccinated and wearing a mask, it's kind of like bring as many people as you need to. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's, yeah. that's definitely a change from, you know, when I was talking to people earlier in the year, last year. Yeah. And yeah. It was like a lot of, like a lot of weird restrictions, like, Oh, this building can only like normally could fit a hundred. So you can only have 25 people in here and they have to all be X amount of feet apart. And like, it was like really challenging just to do work at that point. Like today, for example, um, Jimmy Eat World, we did them last, this time last year out in Phoenix. And they actually just re-released, it was a, it was a stream, you know, ticketed stream. And they just released it for free today, you know, on like a one year anniversary of future surviving and uh, clarity. It's like album playthroughs from top to bottom, all shot on the Ursa's 12K. I think it was a 12Ks at the time and the G2s and a couple pockets. Because you know, but again, about a year ago, right now, and that one, for example, we had to keep the crew limited. I would like we lost one guy to, um, you know, like 
he had he, one guy couldn't make it last minute because of COVID, like during travel and stuff. So like no, no one got sick except for him, and he was totally fine, luckily. But we had like a face, like I'm like we're face shields and masks, you know, distance with cameras and rigs, and like it was just a it was such a challenge at the time to hold, you know, a 40 pound camera with a Ronin, with a ready rig, with a face shield, with a with an N95 mask, and trying to film with a headset on and an ear to listen, you know, it's like, wow. it's just like these layers of shit everywhere. <laughs> like there's a picture of me somewhere. Cause I had, I had to operate on one of them to help out. It's like, I have a ready rig, the Ronin with an Ursa 12K, a giant lens, a headset and an ear, a, ma- a N95 and a face shield. <laughs> just like, you know, like some RoboCop or something. And so you're, uh, so you're looking through the face shield and, and trying to, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking through the camera and white balance the camera and everything. Yeah. Well, like we, like we, I, we would do that all like from farther away, but like when I went to go, like when my um, operators have to go like film talent, it's like, cool, got to suit up. So it's like looking at a monitor through a shield is just such a whole thing. I mean, it worked. No one got sick. Like we, you know, we did everything to all the, you know, CDC guidelines and all that stuff, but it was like, I'm glad those days are hopefully behind us because that was hard. You know, you were really in the the festival scene and touring with bands before all this started, and now you know now you've been doing the streaming for a year and a half. You know, what do you think is the is the future of you know of live music as far as as streaming goes? Do you, you think that 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 streaming is going to continue to be the part of live music in the future that it's been for the last year and a half? Like, let's say someday we get past COVID, you think it's still I think it's going to hold, I think it's going to hold on for a while. I think we're going to be living in a hybrid model for quite some time, especially with international travel being such a thing for like, I'll use the example of Japan, for example, is my favorite place in the world to go. I still can't go to Japan, which is crazy for me because I normally try to go once a year, but it's still closed off due to COVID. So I imagine like the streaming will hold on, especially as like those borders are closed because people want to still see events and like, you know, like I work with the band Slipknot regularly they postponed their their Japanese festival till 2023, but they just did not fest LA <clears throat> two months ago, which is streamed so people can you know at least watch it throughout the world who couldn't, who aren't even allowed to come here or there. So I think that's gonna give a lot of, like be the catalyst for a lot of this to hold on for a long time. Like um, the Danny Wimmer festivals that we just did, Welcome to Rockville, you know, um, was the main one we just did in Florida and Daytona um, in November. I didn't stream that, but they, I was just doing the event highlight stuff, but they were streaming out a lot of stuff on that. Like, you know, not, it's not some of the, like some of the headliners would decline obviously, cause you know, they're, there's too much red tape, but a lot of the mid bands like, oh, we're streaming out, you know, so-and-so today, like live, you know, in real time with the show. And I think that was a big thing for people. And they did a lot of that for free with, you know, with Twitch, but I could see people next year like, hey, you know, if I pay 20, 30 bucks, like I get to, to watch the shows every day, I can kind of tune in when I want. It's something fun to do at home you know, while you're making dinner or whatever, or just watch it, you know, with intent through the weekend, because you can't travel in, or, you know, what if you're in that situation, like, there's gonna be a lot for, a lot, we're going to be in the COVID thing for a while. And, you know, it just changed how the world is. And if you're, you know, live with someone who's high risk, you, but you still want to go to a concert, you may double, you know, you're not going to want to go. So there's a way to do it now. And I think it's going to enable a lot of people to still be at events in a way safely that they couldn't have made otherwise. So at least they're having some fun at home. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're getting all these cool shots that nobody's going to see when they're actually at the venue, you know, I mean, I've, I've been to shows like a giant stadium where I'm in the, I'm in the opposite end zone, you yeah, know, like, watching, what, mostly watching the show on the screen. I mean, I, except for like, the tailgating and being with my friends, I could do that at home. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, let's say, let's just assume you you're at home and you have like your three friends over that, you know, is like safe. And, you know, it's like, We'll just assume you all test, like, you know, you play it real safe. You guys can have a proper party and barbecue, throw it on a projector screen or a big TV. What's the difference of that or an iMeg? You know, it's not that different anymore, especially if the footage from, you know, let's say it's like me or, a, you know, a competitor or a partner company is getting better footage than the iMeg would have gotten anyway, because iMeg is generally an afterthought for a lot of these shows. So like, why would you not want to just watch it at home on your surround sound and not have the chance of someone spilling a beer or coughing on it? You know, it's like, it's, it's just one of those things, like, it does have a, a new place in this market. And it, it, it can be fun. It's just, you know, especially if it's presented correctly. So, you know, we'll kind of see where it goes. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if we lock down again, then 
I'll be doing the streaming model, like just true streaming. And if we don't lock down again, I'll be doing the hybrid model. So it's like, we've, I, I work myself, Sam, you know, my team in general worked really hard to put ourselves in a position where like, we will adapt to whatever the world throws at us. And, you know, we have the gear, you know, I've been working with like the black magic stuff. I've been working with them for years now. It's like, we have such a solid lineup of gear. It's like, cool. We can do anything we need to with their stuff. It always looks good. Our clients are always happy. And we just keep doing it, you know, over and over and over again.